Hi friends, welcome to my channel and this is part 8 video in VCP Data Center Virtualization 2023 and in this video we are going to see how to configure Windows ISPC target server for vCenter server or ESXi host. So why we need a ISPC target server? So basically if you wanted to create a cluster infrastructure uh, or a highly available infrastructure in, in your vCenter infrastructure then you need a shared disk which disk can be uh, basically mounted on multiple ESXi host or uh, can be shared across multiple hosts so if there is a virtual machine um, sitting on one data store it can move from one host to another host without any downtime let's say if one host goes down it it should be able to virtual machine should be able to migrate to another host so this is part of high availability so again if you see here in the left side diagram you will see here this is one of the <coughs> basically storage device you can say uh, the physical SAN or maybe it can be a you know um, any any uh, SAN or NAS or any device which is uh, sharing the storage with the uh, you know ESXi host so this is having this SAN having a standalone uh, connection to one an Ethernet switch which can be a 10, 10 gig switch and then it's directly connected to storage uh, ESXi host so basically this switch goes down or this these uh, any of these cables goes down we will have an impact in our ESXi uh, infrastructure and all you know so um, to avoid this kind of single uh, single uh, you know point of failure we can set up something like this so your storage must be having two controllers so controller one can be connected uh, with both the uh, two uh, ethernet switch or network switch or if this is a FC uh, uh, switch you can say the uh, fiber channel switch then also you can set up the two switch environment and then your both controller uh, will have access to uh, two independent switch so in case one switch goes down or one controller goes down in the SAN you will have access to your storage and basically you will not have a downtime and again from SAN switch both SAN switch or both Ethernet switch the uh, dedicated link is going to ESXi host so if there is a uh, you know a cable failure or uh, there is a failure with the SAN switch Ethernet switch or the SAN control you have a active path which can you know so serving the your virtual machine storage and also you will not have a downtime so when you are designing your infrastructure make sure you always design in such way you have you don't have any single point of failure in your infrastructure and make sure if you have something then get the remediation done get the extra you know uh, basically switches uh, for ethernet or SAN or if your server having less card get the card upgraded in your ESXi host to support a multiple you know um, cards or multiple fixed physical connection to your SAN or uh, uh, SAN ethernet switch or anything like that so <clears throat> avoid any single point of failure in your, in your infrastructure so this is what it is and in this video since this is a lab environment so i don't have a physical san so what i'm going to do i'm going to create one iscc server here window which is going to run our uh our windows server 2022 and we will use that iscc server as a ser uh, storage device and we will mount the learns we will create few learns on the esxi host and then we will mount those uh, learns with the ESXi hosting our infrastructure and then we will we can create a top of that we can create a uh, shared data store and we can you know configure it so how you how to do it so this is one thing I have created brand new machine so if you follow this video you will be able to see how you can configure your infrastructure uh, basically as can see target server also so this is a brand new machine so what I got so first thing what I have to do I got two NICs, so I'm going to change my NIC. One NIC I'm going to assign to domain network, and second NIC. So this having you see, this is getting IP address uh, from my router. So I'm going to configure the IP address which was given in the you know documentation. So IPv6 I'm going to remove, and I'm going to put the IP config 
192.168.0.102.196.10.1.192.168.0.101 which is my domain controller IP uh, this is all and then we will see this what connection and this is uh, I'm using a, a one extra nick on this machine so if you see here on the setting this is marked as a uh, Ethernet one which is host only connection so for virtual machine which is on this network they are able to communicate internally in the vCenter uh, VMware workstation only so this is good now what I'm going to do I'm going to call it first ISKC NIC and then what IP we have to configure here so it does not require you know gateway and also just IP so I'm going to configure IP which is me uh, given there so IPv4 I'll remove IPv6 IPv4 so just 10.10.10.102 .10 .10 .10 and 255 255.255.0 so this is the network IP where, uh, which we are going to connect through uh, storage and ESXi host and this uh, you know um, storage server basically so whatever communication are going to be happen from ESXi host to this uh, particular uh, iSCSI server for SAN connectivity or LAN connectivity it's going to happen on 10.10.10.102 whatever domain connectivity this machine is going to have on this uh, 192 series IP so now I'm going to rename it this machine and join in you know uh, domains so we'll have facility to log in with our domain account and all so let's and so on dot plan so put the IP uh, put the basically account details administrator and I'm going to type my account password and welcome to labs and so on so this is good so machine is joined in domain okay so we got some error anyways we can ignore it and just go ahead and reboot this machine so now machine is joined in domain so if I show you from here you will see the machine is joined so this is good let's wait for re machine to reboot and then we'll configure the iSCSI target on this machine so I'm going to log in with my administrator account so labs and so on slash administrator and type password for this account <laughs> now what I'm going to do I'm going to basically install the iSCSI target server on this machine and also one thing I got I got two extra disk 1.5 TB each added to this machine and we have a disk which we are going to use as a storage for uh, storing the LAN so this is good now if I go here on manage and add role and feature click next 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 and then I'm going to select in the file storage I'm going to select ISCSI target server click on add and then click next next and then install this is simple straightforward installation once this is done you will see the ISCSI in a storage file in storage so till the time the installation is going on I'm going to add disk so I got two disk I'm going to configure as a GPT so now I'm going to create a iSCSI disk here so I'm going to change this as a Z drive basically my DVD drive so I got D drive free so I'm going to use REFS 64k and then give it let's say iSCSI disk 01 and finish and same thing I'm going to do this also so E REFS 64k put the disk 2 
so we got two disk configure so this is good see here now we got two disk each of 1.5 terabytes in size so installation is also done now if i go here and file and services you will see we got this right iskc so now we should be able to create iskc target on this server so i'm going to create target in next videos now uh, where we are going to discuss about basically how you can create or add your esxi host in the storage so so in this video we have see uh, we have checked how to uh, configure iskc server in your lab environment to connect your esxi server in next video we are going to configure our esxi host with the uh, multiple you know uh, this multiple NICs to access our SAN which in our scenario the SAN is ISKC target server so this is all about in this video so thank you for watching please subscribe me for more videos and if you have any query any question related to this you can always post me on my given mail IDs thank you once again bye bye